We are starting with some breaking news today. Ukraine under attack during rush hour. Russia conducted mass airstrikes while you were sleeping, killing civilians, knocking out power, water, and heat. Explosions destroyed critical infrastructure, including this landmark pedestrian bridge in Kyiv. And this morning, President Zelensky saying that Russia is trying to wipe Ukraine off the face of the earth. Now, these are the first attacks in the capital city since June. Kyiv is one of at least nine cities targeted during Russia's broad ambush since the start of the, the invasion. It's in retaliation for this Crimean bridge bombing that President Putin called a terror attack. Tom Dempsey is live for us in Washington with the very latest, including a new warning for the U.S. Embassy, Tom. Good morning, Natasha. Yeah, this morning, Ukraine's president has described the attacks on 10 different Ukrainian cities as terrorism. Vladimir Zelensky says Russia is now not only targeting energy infrastructure, but also neighborhoods. Ukraine's capital under attack this morning, a series of deadly explosions hitting Kyiv for the first time in months. The attacks coming just days after a massive explosion targeted a key bridge linking Russia to Crimea. The bridge, normally serving as a vital supply route to the area Russia annexed from Ukraine years ago, left in flames while lines of cars waited for hours in traffic. While no one has claimed responsibility, Russian President Vladimir Putin has called it a terrorist attack. This morning, concerns remain over Putin possibly using nuclear missiles as a counteroffensive by Ukraine continues to bring big losses for Russia. The latest fighting has focused on southern regions. On Sunday, Russian bombings killed at least a dozen people inside this apartment building while injuring around 60 others. This morning, Putin planned to meet with his security council to discuss that bridge explosion from over the weekend. Meantime, in Ukraine, President Vladimir Zelensky has called on world leaders to designate Russia as a terrorist state ahead of a vote in the United Nations this week over whether or not to condemn Russia for annexing parts of Ukraine. Natasha? All right, Tom Dempsey live for us in our nation's capital. Thank you. I want to bring in Niall Stanich now, associate editor at The Hill. Niall, thank you so much for being here. Good to be here, Natasha. So, Niall, this morning Putin announcing the new attacks are in response to the bridge explosion. He called that original explosion terrorism. How devastating? Can you help put in per into perspective what that explosion meant to his already struggling war effort? It was devastating in at least a couple of respects, Natasha. One is the fact that that bridge is important for practical logistical reasons. It helps Moscow uh, supply its troops. But the other thing is that it was symbolic of the Russian desire to make Crimea part of its territory, for Crimea to be seen as part of its territory. And it was also of great personal symbolism to Vladimir Putin when this bridge was inaugurated in 2018. Mr. Putin drove across it in a rather lavish ceremony. So for that to be destroyed or partially destroyed is a serious blow to him in a number of respects. And following the bombing of that key bridge, is Putin increasingly running out of options? Are we seeing a Putin with his back against the wall? And is there concern about what he might do if he does feel cornered? Yes and yes, I think, are the answers to those. There's no question that this war has gone dramatically badly for Vladimir Putin. From the very start, it hasn't worked out as he had planned. Russia had hoped to take Kyiv in this early push that was rebuffed. And of course, more recently, we've seen a Ukrainian counteroffensive take back a large amount of territory that Russia had taken in the initial stages of the war. So this is going badly. The question is what Putin does from here. Obviously, the more difficulty he is in, the more desperate his situation appears, the more fears ratchet up that he may take some other form of action, perhaps including some manner of nuclear weapon. Absolutely. And let's talk about uh, the latest events that just happened overnight. The targets, including Kyiv in central Ukraine, also in the far west. Do any of these targets even help Russia achieve its goals in East Ukraine, or is this Putin simply making a point? I think it's more the latter. I'm not clear what strategic goals these would accomplish, but I think it's a lot more about Vladimir Putin believing that he was punched by the destruction of that bridge and is now punching back 
as hard as possible, obviously with civilians uh, in Kyiv and elsewhere in the firing line. I think it's more about that uh, retribution than it is about the accomplishment of any particular strategic aim. And I want to ask you about one more point. Uh, this morning, Belarus and Russia announcing they are deploying a joint military force to Western Belarus. Could this be a sign that Belarus is getting ready to join the fight? It could be, and that would obviously expand the fight and risk the kind of escalation that the United States and other Western powers have been eager to avoid. Having said all of that, I'm not sure that Belarus's involvement, if it were to happen, would fundamentally change the military balance. I mean, clearly Russia is the much bigger power, but we've already seen Mr. Putin call up 300,000 reservists. In that context, I'm not honestly persuaded that Belarus's intentions will shift things, as I say, in a fundamental sense, one way or another. I hear you. I certainly appreciate the context. Niall Stanich, thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.